It's been a while since I've done a creamy garlic recipe and one of my most popular recipes is a creamy garlic mushroom sauce. So we're going to combine a couple of ingredients to make a creamy garlic mustard chicken pot pie. The filling is absolutely incredible. And then there's puff pastry put over the top, put in the oven and baked until it's golden brown, then cracked open to reveal that delicious center. Let's get straight into it. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. To start this off, here is our mirepoix, which consists of two brown or yellow onions, one carrot and one river celery, and this sometimes gets confused with sofrito, but that also usually contains tomatoes and bell peppers. As for our mirepoix, all of this can then be ran along the larger side of a box grater, with this method creating the strongest flavour within each ingredient. Next is four cloves of freshly peeled garlic that can also be grated to extract the most flavour, using a microplane to do so, creating a paste which is also known as minced. For the herbs, we need 7 grams or 0.2 ounces of marjoram or tarragon and 10 grams or 0.3 ounces of soft stem thyme, and these can just be roughly chopped and can be substituted with their dried counterparts, which I'll leave all of the details about in the description below. Lastly, we're also going to need 1 kilo or 2.2 pounds of boneless and skinless chicken thighs. To get this cooking, place a large high rimmed pan or pot over high heat, add in 1.5 tablespoons or 30 milliliters of olive oil, and once hot, add in the chicken thigh, trying your best to not overlap them, along with a pinch of sea salt flakes, and sear for 8 minutes, flipping them halfway, creating a nice golden color, and once done, reduce the heat to medium high, and remove the chicken from the pan. Now to the pan, add in 70 grams or 2.4 ounces of unsalted butter, allowing it to melt and start foaming. Then add in the grated mirepoix ingredients, which is the onion, carrot, and celery. Also adding in the minced garlic and a pinch of sea salt flakes to taste. Give this all a really good mix through and saute for six minutes or until the moisture on the bottom of the pan has been cooked out. Also being sure to break up the garlic as minced garlic can easily clump up. With that done, add in 50 grams or 1.7 ounces of plain all-purpose flour, which is our thickening agent, and this can be mixed through the mirepoix and cooked for one and a half minutes to cook out the floury texture. Return the seared chicken along with any resting juices, also adding in three quarters of a cup or 180 milliliters of white wine, which can be substituted for chicken stock if you can't consume alcohol, to deglaze the pan, pulling up any stuck flavors, then evenly arrange the chicken in the pan and reduce for one minute. Next to go in is one tablespoon or 30 grams of whole grain mustard for a slight bitter sweetness, two teaspoons or 20 grams of Dijon mustard for a tangy sharpness, four cups or one liter of chicken stock for depth and a foundation to our sauce, one quarter of a cup or 60 milliliters of thickened cream for a nice smooth texture and color, the fresh or dried marjoram or tarragon, as well as the fresh or dried thyme, both for a fresh herbal infusion, three dried bay leaves for a piney infusion, sea salt flakes to taste, and cracked black pepper. 20 cracks worth. Let's then give this all a really good mix so that those flavors can become friends, ensuring the mustard is broken up and well mixed through, increasing the heat to high, and bring this to a boil in the process. Once boiling, reduce the heat to low, place on a lid, and reduce for 45 minutes. Now after 45 minutes, carefully remove the lid, being careful of the escaping heat, and gently remove the chicken, placing it into a bowl. The sauce can then be placed over medium heat, give it another mix through, and let it continue simmering whilst we sort out the chicken. As for the chicken, we can then thinly slice it or shred it up depending on what you prefer, just until we have all of this, which can then be placed back into the sauce along with any juices, giving it all another really good mix, cooking for a final two minutes, checking seasoning levels in the process, then turn it off the heat and remove it from the stovetop. Transfer the mix into four large oven safe ramekins or six smaller ones, filling them to one centimeter below the rim line. Next, we need two sheets of defrosted puff pastry and use anything you have that's a couple of centimeters larger than the diameter of the ramekins to press down and create a circle. We can then use a butter knife to carve out the template or depending on what you used, you may not need to carve it out at all, but all I had was the bean hopper lid on my coffee machine. After that's done, carefully and gently peel it off, trying your best not to tear it, then lay it over the top of the ramekin and gently, with a little bit of pressure, crimp the puff pastry around the edges, which will create a tight fitting pastry lid and a nice smooth surface. With that done, lay yourself one large egg, crack it on a flat surface to prevent broken eggshell coming along for the journey, then place it into a small bowl and use a fork to beat it up until smooth. This can then be brushed over the pastry all across the surface and sides, which will allow it to gloss and become a beautiful golden color. Use a sharp knife to very gently create three or four slices on the top, not going the whole way through, which will allow for steam to escape and not bubble over too much in the oven. Sprinkle over some sea salt flakes on the surface, which is completely optional, and you can use cracked black pepper too. Then place these onto a baking tray evenly apart and take them over to a preheated oven set at 200 degrees Celsius or 390 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for 20 to 25 minutes or until the pastry has puffed up and become a beautiful golden color. 
Then carefully remove, turn off the oven, and allow these to cool for about 15 minutes as they're seriously scorching hot. After everything's done, what we're then left with is these beautiful golden creamy garlic mustard chicken pot pies that can be served with any of your favourite sides or on their own, and all that's left to do is break open that soft and fluffy puff pastry, revealing the creamy goodness inside, and to make it all worthwhile, we can then not burn our mouth this time, and then dig in, and get up from the floor. <laughs>